You know, I just can't get enough drink. That's better. Okay, time for the latest installment in the Amplifier Adventure. I've tested this all out and it is working. And it seems to have a hidden feature that I didn't even know about, which I'll explain later. But first, let's, ha let's take a look onto what I've done to it. Well, I've put the connectors in. Sorry, the blurry connectors. Maybe it's because this wire is there. No, it's still blurry. My camera battery is running low, so I better do this pretty quick. I've also put the transistors on a different heatsink, a much smaller one because the other one was too big. Those two transistors are what's going to power the actual amplifiers. Now, this doesn't actually have the amplifying bits in it yet. I had no luck with the LM383 amplifiers. I did. I did get them working, but when I built them onto the Vero board, or the strip board, or whatever you want to call it, it just um, started making noises again, so I've ordered some amplifier kits, which I'm going to... amplifier circuit kits, which I'm going to put in there. But for now, the Pedo Scott is filling in for the amplifier part of it. So, let's see what this thing can do. I have YouTube playing on the TV here. The record player is playing. This tape deck is playing, but this one isn't. So just start that up. Now, let's do the source selecting. Put it onto the auxiliary input. Okay, just turn this up a little bit. I had to put a different knob here because the other one, the little screw goes well, straight. The line out for my TV is so faint. This is a two-track reel-to-reel. Now, let's select the record player. It doesn't have as good treble frequency response. Got some crud on there. Now, tape one. Volume control. Take two. That's a bit loud, isn't it? So that's really good. Now, let's try some recording through this. Now, I'm not going to record onto this tape because it's not... I don't want to record over that. I'll use this tape here. It's a very old tape, probably from the 60s. Probably from the mid-60s, actually. Very old tape here. So, I'll just start that, put that into record mode. I have another YouTube video playing on my computer there. Just select AUX so it will... It's coming through. Let's start it recording. It will also record onto this as well. Here I have a replacement. I already replaced the rubber on this one. This is the replacement rubber for this one. I took this rubber Recording on both of those simultaneously. The rubber on this one, even though it's... Sorry, Dr. Old, Cassette and Cassette Master for using your videos in this demonstration. Good. So I'm not claiming any really copyright for good. it. So, now I'm going to replace rubber Let's just this. rewind these. Another thing you can see is that the new rubber is a little bit thicker than the original one. I mean, that's all. Okay, let's play it back. We put onto this reel with that. Let's start this rubber. one. So, I 
Um, here I have a replacement. This um, tape does not record uh, high frequencies very good. One. Another cassette deck which I had on this one. I took this rubber, and though it's even older on the head, the rubber on this one, even though it's even older on the head. So that's a pretty good demonstration that um, it records. Um, now, let, I'm just show you the tape dubbing feature now. The Denon is tape 1 and the Akai is tape 2. So, I want to select 1 to 2. Now I'll start this tape for playing. <laughs> And it is coming out very strongly. Okay, stupid song's ending. But anyway. Come on, hurry up. There we are, it's coming through too strongly. Right, and there you go. That's tape deck two to tape deck one. Now let's try it the other way around. So first we need to select tape deck two to tape deck one. Put this into record standby mode because it will monitor from whichever tape deck it's copying to. Start this playing. Okay, that's at the wrong speed, but who cares? Let's just see. Let's just turn that up a little bit. Right. Now, let's... See, well, you obviously know it has made a recording, but let's just play it anyway. When I find the beginning of this tape, of course. Now, there is something very strange that this amplifier does, which I kind of overlooked. Which I um, didn't realise it would do it at the time, but now, thinking about how it's wired up, obviously, you know, how it's all wired up inside. Seems obvious now. Now, um, with the tape monitor on, it's on tape monitor one right now. Now I can play this tape here, but on this reel to reel, if I put this onto source, you can see there's nothing coming out because the tape dubbing is not selected. Now, if I put this input selector onto phono and play the record player, it will also work for the aux as well. Records is now playing. You can see that the record player is coming through onto the reel to reel. The same would happen if I was. if aux was selected, the aux would come out onto the reel to reel. And it also works the other way around. If I have this on tape deck two, tape two, start this playing. Obviously, you switch this to tape, so. Now, I'll put this into record. As you can see, nothing is registering on the thing there. Now, I'll start the record playing. So this can actually rec so with this I can actually record something while listening to something else. And that's pretty amazing. I never thought it would do that, but this has a hidden feature that it didn't that even I didn't know about. <laughs> 